Hey everybody, this is Jamie Butif with 432 Design, and I got a couple of things I'd like to discuss and talk with you guys about uh, today. Um, as you remember from the last video, this is the uh, platonic solid water structuring device, energizing device, and oxygenation, right? So I want to talk more about the platonic solids and how this whole thing works, the structuring stack. Um, what does structured water do? What is structured water? All right, um, this is a picture of, of water flowing uh, down a mountain stream, and you see how all the rocks are, have jagged edges, all right, they have straight, uh, um, sharp angles to them and how the water flows over that with, uh, with the air. Okay, this, the, the water coming out of the mountain, all right, is at the top. When it comes up out of the ground and starts flowing down the mountain, it's highly mineralized, okay, so it has, it has a wetness to it. It's, got, it's a higher alkaline. It has a wetness to it, and that wetness allows the structuring process to take place. Now, in the... Uh, uh, the previous video talked about the platonic solids that are in here. All right, these are the platonic solids. All right, so you've got uh, a tetrahedron, a cube, an octahedron, a dodecahedron, and an icosahedron. Okay, all of these shapes are in here. These shapes are actually made out of acrylic, which is the same material that this is made out of. It's completely water safe. All right, so what I wanted to address is that there's a lot of people that are saying that the water needs to be moving over rounded more rounded objects, all right, so we can create this vortex, and that doesn't make any sense to me, okay, right, rocks at the top of a mountain aren't rounded, they're only rounded at the very bottom of the stream, where it's just been, where it's been wore off, where it's taken all the, the, uh, uh, the minerals and the sand and everything else, it's, it, it wears the rock down, so where water is flowing over these rounded rocks, it's not structuring as well, all right, as it is if it's flowing over these, because what happens is water flows over the, uh, uh, these platonic solids, as it comes off of these geometries, these, these angles here, it vortexes microscopically in very tiny amounts. There are dozens and dozens and dozens of vortex action happening in here as it runs off of these sharp angles. Now, if you said, you know, that, that straight lines and, sh and, uh, and, and sharp angles aren't found in nature, that's just not true. All right, this is a, a quartz crystal. You see these sharp, uh, these sharp angles? and these smooth faces, this came right out of the ground like this, okay? This is indicative of how uh, shapes in nature uh, form themselves, okay? So it is crucial to have the straight lines and the, the very precise angled geometry because that's what's in nature. It's what's found normally in nature, okay? That's why fresh mountain water high up in the mountain is way better, it's more energized, it's more structured than, than it is further downstream where the rocks are rounded and the water's moving slower. All right, so that's why it's, it's crucial to have uh, the platonic solids and these very specific straight sharp angles in here. This is what creates the vortex action. If these angles were rounded and smooth, you wouldn't have it. All right, now let's just talk about a little bit about what structured water really is. Water that comes out of your tap water, it, it comes in clusters. It, it holds itself together. All right, and you don't want those clustered waters. You want them to be unclustered. So essentially, when you structure water, you're you're breaking those clusters down into smaller, into smaller and smaller clusters. Uh, now, some people would like to say they call it the hydrogen bond angle. Now, let me just explain what that is because nobody's ever had, nobody's ever been able to take a picture of an atom. It's just something that we've conceived: a proton and an electron spinning around it. It's just something that we've conceived. There's no picture of what of what an atom actually. We we can't do it. So there's no way to actually take a picture of the hydrogen bond angle. It's not possible. But let me give you an idea of what it what it. What it means versus wet water versus um, unstructured water or clustered water. Now, just envision taking an old uh, an old car, right? Faded paint, right? And if you if you wax one end or one side of the hood of that car, right? And you put water on there, you're going to see it beat up, right? That's clustering of water, which you don't want. On the other side, where there's no wax, right? When you put water, in, it wets, it lays down, it doesn't beat up at all. That's the water that you want to drink because it has it's wetter. All right, now, you can, you can say that the hydrogen bond angle is, is greater, all right, but the water that, that structures in this, in this matter is, is more hydrating to the cells. It'll get into the cells better, and it'll flush toxins easier. It'll hydrate your cells much faster and much better than, than unstructured or, or clustered water. Okay, so I just wanted to get that uh, straightened out as far as what, what structured water really is. Essentially, structuring water unclusters it and makes it into smaller clusters so the body can hydrate better, all right? Um, the other thing I want to talk about, oh yeah, 
Uh, the high pH, all right, having minerals in the water is, is, is crucial for this process to work. The water has to be wet. The water has to have those minerals in it for the geometry because we all know that geometry is vibration. Frequency, uh, vibration is geometry and, and, and uh, geometry is vibration. So these have frequencies to them that this water is, is, is rolling over, all right. Um, uh, so yeah, you have to have the minerals. The minerals in the water, you, you can't take RO water, okay, or just regular tap water and run it through here and have it structured. It, if it doesn't have the minerals in it, it's not going to work, all right? You have to have the, the two things because the water coming out of the from, the, from deep underground before it starts flowing over these rocks is highly mineralized as well. Um, the other uh, thing that I want to address is, you know, other than, you know, the straight lines, you know, you, this is nature. This is came right from the ground with straight lines, sharp angles, and straight faces, okay? But the other thing I want to address is this high pH. Now, it is, it, when you mineralize water, you're going to increase the pH, but drinking high pH water is actually not good for you. And here I'm going to show you why. Your stomach acid is around a 2 pH, okay? And it's, it's, it's in the same category as battery acid and hydrochloric acid, all right? You have to have very acidic acid in your stomach in order to digest food. If you're drinking high pH water, like Fiji water, supposedly 7.8 pH, if you're drinking high pH water, all you're doing is drinking antacid water. All you're doing is neutralizing the pH in your stomach, and, or the, uh, the acid in your stomach, which you need to digest food. If you're drinking high pH water and neutralizing the acid in your stomach, your stomach can now have to produce more acid to overcome it so you can digest your food, okay? The only reason you need high pH or a little bit higher pH, you know, like around a 7, is to structure the water. That's, that's what allows the water to structure is the minerals, the higher pH, then you can structure or decluster the water if you would rather say that. So drinking high pH water is not going to, it's, it's not good for you. Right? It's not good for your stomach, it's not good for your digestive tract. Now, I know a lot of people have started drinking high pH water. Now they have all kinds of digestive problems. Their food isn't digesting properly. They're not able to absorb the, the nutrients out of the food because it's not being digested. It's going into the digestive tract undigested or the, the, the intestines largely undigested because the acid breaks down um, the nutrients in the food. It breaks down the amino acids. And when you don't have that high concentration of stomach acid to, to break down the, the food, you're not going to get the nutrients. Drinking high pH water is not good for you at all whatsoever. Okay, so I wanted to, to uh, dispel that. Um, I think that's pretty much all I had. Uh, just wanted to show how the importance of sharp, sharp angles, sharp lines, the sharp geometry of the platonic solids that are in here. Like I said, it's made out of acrylic. It's not going to leach any chemicals whatsoever. It's completely drinking water safe. And because the platonic solids, you know, the angles of these mimic what's in nature. Okay, so that's all what this device does. It essentially mimics what's in nature. It brings it brings the air down, it, 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 it flows over it, and you can, you can structure it. If you want to take this off and just pour the water straight down through here to fill it up, then it'll structure pretty much, you know, it'll, it'll decluster quicker than if you just poured it in here and then let it, let it run. Okay, so this does pretty much uh, almost immediately decluster the water or structure the water however you want to term it. But if you poured it straight through here, it would, it would structure much quicker than if you just filled the, this up and then let it, let it cycle. But the thing about with this device is it's constantly structuring. It's constantly keeping it structured. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to address about the, uh, the rose quartz crystal. Uh, somebody said that, uh, that rose quartz has radiation to it. See, and it's just the opposite of that. People use rose quartz to absorb the radiation. For example, the water uh, that we drink out of the tap or however we get it, or even bottle water, uh, which is just as bad, all right, it has, um, oh, yeah, the rose quartz. The rose quartz actually takes the energy out of, uh, see, th this water and every water that we, that we have around us, whether it's tap water or bottle water, is subjected to, you know, Wi-Fi radiation. It's have to do cell phone radiation, and all the radiation uh, from, uh, from uh, radio stations, and every, all the radiation that's traveling through the air, this electronic, um, electromagnetic radiation that we're experiencing, the, the, uh, the rose quartz crystal helps take that structure out of the water that the, that, the, that the radiation puts into it. So, no, the rose quartz doesn't put radiation into the water. It actually helps take it out. It conditions the, the water so it's not subjected to all of the, uh, the, uh, the Wi-Fi, the ambient radiation that's around us from all the electromagnetic noise that, uh, you know, from our, from our TV sets and from everything else, even from the pump down here. You know, it helps, you know, keep that, uh, the electromagnetic radiation from structuring the water. This structures it. And the gross quartz helps keep it, you know, keep it, it's conditioned, it's more like a conditioner, it's more like a water conditioner 
to keep all the, the the structuring from the electromagnetic energy around us uh, that we don't want. So anyway, um, thank you for watching.